I don't want to be mean, but I'm just saying that every other coach quarterback combination would beat up Mike McDaniel and Tua. I'm sorry. That's just what he said. That is, that is exactly I, I, I what I think actually I agree with you. So I'm not, I think you're funny, but I, I do agree. Oh, yeah, baby. That's right. We're back. It's July 25th, 2022. Yep. Chris Sims, Ahmed Fareed, Chris Sims Unbutton. We're here. Ahmed wore his special red pants. It's a special day. And I don't know. The internet doesn't agree with you. And Tua and Mike McDaniel. <laughs> That's what we'll start, but we'll get to that later. A All section right? of the internet does not a agree. A section of the internet does not agree, which can mean like really it seems like the whole world. It does it seem doesn't, like, It doesn't mean well. Like, Sections can can make you think that they're overrunning the country at times. When for sure, when every single one of them are in your mentions, it does probably feel like <laughs> yeah. It does yeah, probably you feel think like so? That. Yes. I know. I've had to tell a few people over like the last few days about the you know Chris Sims Ahmed Fareed Super Brawl and all that, and I had a few people ask and like, oh yeah, who won? And I was like, well. Certain team, certain certain city might have hijacked the process yeah. a little bit, uh, but we'll get to that, man. What's up? You good? I'm good. Yeah? It's been a long time. It has been a long time. I know you missed me. It's all right. Try to control I did. yourself. I did. All right. I did think, though, yeah. coming back, right. I thought you'd come back with a fresh haircut. Nope. You're always big time I know, with right? a fresh haircut. Right? This is, might be as long as I've ever seen your I've, hair. It's as long as I've had maybe at NBC. Um, I, you know, it, it's over. It's over. The other haircut's done. I'm what? moving on to a new one. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go. I don't know what exactly I'm moving on to. I'm just growing it out first. And I'm going to get it cleaned up this weekend. Okay. I'm thinking of going like classic 50s, like Mad Men. Like that kind of haircut, like kind of just traditional, like semi little fade, part it, slicked a little bit, boom, and just being like classic that way. Would it be combed back or combed to the side? I'll, maybe like an in-betweener. Yeah. I think more to the side, though, more, you know, with a slight move to the back, but just around there. Everybody's sick of it in my family. Everybody, my haircut, my past haircut. I just got sick of hearing it. But were you sick of it? No, not really. I kind of liked it. And then I saw a clip today of me, an old self, and I was like, damn, that haircut looks good. Old self. <laughs> old, self. <laughs> old self looked good. New yeah. self looks shaggy. My hair's green. You can see gray hairs popping out because I've been in the There's pool. That's gray. why it's green. Yeah. yeah, I got some grays there. So, yeah, this is what. But I'm so sick of like hearing my wife or my mom like, oh, you don't want to let it grow out. Oh, you got another haircut. Yeah. So those two, my sister, everybody. So I'm, I'm moving on. So my son, he's eight years old. Yeah. Right around before Christmas time, he's like, I want to let my hair grow. Cool. I was like, okay, how long? Right. He goes, forever. Forever. Yeah. That's and the age group. Now right here now. it is. We're end of July. Yeah. Still growing out. It's yeah. actually looking pretty good now. Is it? Yeah. Is it? It's got I, some I, waves on the side right. of it. And is it in his eyes yet to where he's shaking it out of his head and doing he'll go, that crap? He'll do this move where he takes uh, oh. his four fingers oh. and he'll just move it to the side. Oh, yeah. So I couldn't. His that's eyes. when I had enough of my kids because the long hair is in style with these kids right now. It's like the 70s. It's right. And they back. grow it out and there's like no refining of it either. It's just like, we want to let it go everywhere. Yes. And like they like this hair in their face. Yep. I cannot f stand it. Yeah. It's the worst haircut ever. And I had to put an end to it. At, during basketball season, didn't I tell you this story? How did you do it? Did you well, just? Uh, we were, my son was in a basketball game, like one of his first games of the year, and he was running down the court, shaking his head, getting his hair out of the way, like yeah. he was doing a Head and Shoulders commercial. <laughs> and the game got over, and I just said, "If you want to play basketball, we got to get a haircut tomorrow. We're not playing anymore." I kept, so "I'm not going to watch you run up and down the court yeah. playing with your hair as you're dribbling. Like that's just not going on." <laughs> so that ended that. And he goes, "At that point." I got the whole family on board to tell dad his haircut sucks. <laughs> oh, he was already telling me that sucks. He was like, you're too old to have that haircut. That's what he kept yeah. telling me. No other dads have your haircut. Well, this oh. is cool. I didn't know we'd have breaking news off yeah, the top of the Yeah, there you go. Uh, we got it all a little bit. That good. is big news Good there. break. I'm back. That's it. You do feel Wham, good. Bam. I know you're always itching good. to work. You love working. I, I do know? like work, yes. It was good. It was a good break. But after a while, you maybe get used to the time off. Yeah, I was I was relaxing quite nicely. I need to get back to work though. Get back on schedule. I was doing way too much retox. You're healthier. I'm healthier you, when I work. Yes. Right. When I have too much spare time, I smoke and drink too much, which can be a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're back. We put you right to work because uh Oh, we we do have to pass this along. So we're going to get to a new new ranking for you. Yes. We, we did the quarterbacks. Woo, 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 woo. We did the Super Brawl. Right. Much controversy everywhere. Yeah. And then we had a month off. Yeah. We had the Super Brawl playing out. 
controversy. Right. So now we're going to make some more controversy with the position group wide receivers. Mm. We're going to look at the mm. wide receivers again. Oh, I know I'm going to make some noise today then. If, I know that. If we have some time, we'll do an Ask Me Anything from some of your questions from before. Right. But we also want to pass along some other news. We have a new YouTube page. So if you are watching this, yes, you already know that. Right. Right? Right. YouTube.com slash NFL on NBC. Right. So this is just all NFL stuff on NBC. All the NFL stuff. Yep. So that Olympic stuff. The uh, Premier League. I don't got to see got. any of that crap here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I just wanted to have fun with the company. That a crap can be seen on the NBC <laughs> on Sports. On their own NBC yeah. Sports. Keep right. it over there. All Get the football that stuff. Crap so off my NFL page. If you're listening to this right. with no no video, you don't have to worry about anything. Oh, look at that. But if you're watching now, we're, uh, Kristen's running a promo. Now they're showing right a promo. Now. Ooh, yeah. subscribe to PFT Live. How Oops. come they use that shot? Oh, you're look. See like, that hair? Look at that hair. It looks good. You'll Damn, never, I need yeah, a haircut. You'll never see that again. Oh, Kurt Cousins, Kurt Cousins going over here sitting down. Yep. Mike. There's a Michael Florio. Yeah. A OK. He's like, cool. Oh, Aaron Rogers. there's Aaron Rodgers saying, don't read trash like that. Pete, is this what we were supposed to do during the promo? Just like dictate what's happening yeah. in the promo? <laughs> hey, come on. I mean, uh, like, 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 audio. I, ooh, I know people shave, like audio man. and what all that? that stuff too, but like, can't you just like YouTube it and audio too and then take a look down every now and then when we have some? That's what I would do. That's yeah, what I do. A right. lot of people do. Right. They don't I, watch the whole thing, I don't but have to they sit listen there to it. Right. And yeah. listen to it. Oh, wait, this is like, what are they talking about? Let me see this graphic, whatever. Yeah. Let me see Ahmed's red yeah. pants. Let me see his yeah. sweat pit, sweaty pits. Yeah. They talk about it all the time. Chris's <laughs> hair, shaggy hair. Yeah. Uh, so the good thing about this, too, is right. that when you subscribe and you click the bell for notifications, you'll get the notification, but you'll always know it's football. It's just all football. Yeah, that's a good thing. Could be Mike. Could be Florio. It. Yeah, right. If you don't like Mike, you're yep. in trouble. Downfall. Right? Yeah. Sometimes but you got to deal gonna, with it. It's going to be football content right. on our YouTube channel, NFL on NBC. One final thing here, Lockdown Cornerback says, anything fun happened to your, during your vacation? Glad you guys are back. I did have something fun happen during our vacation, which wasn't much of a vacation for me. I was in Philadelphia yesterday. Our baseball package on Peacock continues. I was hanging out with former Yankee great. Nick Swisher, bundle of energy. Uh, we we're in Philadelphia, and it was on the field, as you can see here. Oh. The thermometer said 120 degrees, and he had no cares in the world. I was going to say, that's typical face for him. It doesn't really matter. He didn't <laughs> care. He was like, whatever. It could be 150. That hair that Nick Swisher has, yeah. will that be your future hair? Mm. Somewhat, I mean, you know, somewhat close to that. You know, probably won't be quite as waved up in the front that way. Yeah. Uh, it won't be like your hair. I know that. I'm so um, gray. So, Why, am I usually that gray, or is that just the light hitting it? Uh, no, you're gray. Uh, no, it is the light. It's the light. You're not that gray. <laughs> Sitting here right That's now, crazy. you're not as gray as it looks there in that picture. Definitely not. I did you sweat have. your ass off yesterday? I did. Yeah, how could you not? I mean, I did. I do in a studio that's climate controlled. Yeah, right. So I how mean, am I not on the field? That's brutal. Yeah. Um, but it was fun. It was a good game. Phillies lost. They're in trouble now. They lost three in a row to start the second half. Yeah. Enough baseball. You can get well, that. Wait. What? Anything else during your vacation that was fun? Anything for you? Anything you did here over the last few weeks? I know you didn't really have a vacation. Not no, like the baseball's me. been fun. It's been traveling every weekend. Yeah. So I was in Toronto not that long ago at the Sky Dome, right. Rogers Center now, which is cool. I don't yeah. know. When's the last time you've been to Toronto? What a great city. <laughs> it, it's been it's been like four or five years. It's uh, awesome. Toronto is one of the places I went that got me really jump-started on my spleen oh. correction. Wow. Right. That got me down. There was a doctor there that knew, you know, the physical body as good as yeah. anybody. Yeah. Right. And what, are you, what are you laughing at? I did not expect that. To I know. That's where really. he, he was the first guy that gave me answers to go, nothing in your core works. Wow. And that's when I was like, what? And he's like, yeah. He's like, look. And he, I had an ultrasound thing on as I was doing sit-ups. And he's like, look. Not any of your muscles, none of them are contracting. You're like pulling with your arms or pulling with your, you know, using your back muscles. He got me going the right direction. That, wow. I went there a few times during that process. The beginning of your spleen correction. Exactly. Trying happened. to figure out what the hell was going on. Yeah, great city, though, to your point. It, it was really awesome. Is. It was right. a cool city. And so we've been, we've been all around. We've been D.C., we've been Cleveland, Pittsburgh. So yeah. it's Miami. So it, it's, it's honestly been really fun. All right, good. good. Um, but now we're moving on to football. Let's do it. And uh, time to get back to work here. And this is Neil Watch's PFT, which he has not been able to do for yeah. the past, what, five weeks? Yep. Could today for the first time. He goes, Chris, are you planning on doing another wide receiver top 10? It was so much fun in previous years. <laughs> was it wasn't for you, Neil. <laughs> uh, yes. 
Yes, we're doing one. We are. I mean, we're always talking about this. I don't want to become like Mr. List whore guy, okay? Yes. Like every time there's Chris Sims, the list whore guy, every time there's one, he's got to make a list of something. I don't want to necessarily always be that guy. Pete will ask me, go, what should we do? I'll go, just make Chris do a list. Hey, you're right. You're very good at throwing work on my plate, <laughs> as we know. Yeah. But then, like, but I feel like there's some times where it's needed a little bit, you know? And, and like, with Neil, hey, yeah, I did it a few years ago. It, it caused some issues. But I'm not even going to say maybe I got some of those wrong or didn't maybe one was as good as I would have even liked to a degree. But, like, right now, receivers, there's a lot of good ones. We know that. And I think within in lieu of the Madden ratings that have come out lately, and I've seen mm. some other people do wide receiver rankings, yeah, I'd like to get involved in the conversation. I would. Um, because one, I think the Madden ratings are borderline horrible uh, in a lot of positions. Sorry, Madden. I don't know. Well, I don't have to say sorry to him. R.I.P. to Mr. Madden. Yes. Uh, but something went wrong there. But yeah, I think it's a good conversation. We got a lot of lot of guys to talk about. So let's show your list. The last time you did this, two years ago, was two years ago. Right. It was 2020 when we were looking for things to do as well. Yeah. Uh, you did a top 10 wide receiver. Might have been. Was it? Did we do it right before the year? Was it right around? Or is, or, it was July, it was right, July. right. There we go. Okay. It was that time where I went to Pete. What do we do? And Pete goes, make Chris do a list. So it was and July of 2020. Of July yep. 21st of, yeah, yeah. so almost, wow. Right. Almost, you're right. Right. Like four days past two-year anniversary of when this came out. I got two things on there that I know already. So for those like, who are listening, yeah. let me let me just read through it. I'll go through the top ten. We'll start at number one. Tyreek Hill, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, DeAndre Hopkins, Odell Beckham, A.J. Green, Amari Cooper was eight. Stephon Diggs was nine. Cortland Sutton was ten. And Devontae Adams is down there also receiving votes at 37. No, that's not true. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> well, so that was your top ten. That was my top ten. In a lot of ways, you know, I sit here and look at it now and go, I don't, I don't really have a lot of issues with it there. I will, where I'll say is where I, I know that we're, you know, Devontae Adams should have been in my top ten. There's no doubt about that. And that was the big stink at the that time. That was the big stink at the time. I understand that. And he, he should have been. I, I was wrong. I might have played the potential of Cortland Sutton a little bit too much. And hey, he's a talented guy. I don't want people to not think that. You know, Amari Cooper was pretty damn good at that time. People got to remember. I think, though, the ones that I look at to go is Devontae Adams, the neglection there. I was wrong. He should have been in the top ten. I don't believe he should have been in my top five. I'm not, like, going away from that. But then the other one that I think that's probably – and, I, you know, I went on a little bit of a projection where the guy had been in his career, came off from an injury season, was A.J. Green. A.J. Green and probably the other guy that should not have been on there that yeah. year. So those two were the ones that were glaring to me when I look back at it. Uh, the rest of the list, I don't necessarily have that much of a problem with, actually. I'm surprised to see Michael Thomas was number three on your list yeah. back then. Well, I mean, this has become the other thing, too, here. Michael Thomas is really good, again. But, like, when did we get into this, whoever has the most catches is the best receiver in football? Because I don't remember anybody saying that about Wes Welker when he was catching the most balls in football for three and four years in a row. Nobody was going, he's the best. But now, because of fantasy and where it is, whoever has the most receptions is the best receiver. Bullshit. Like, bull that doesn't mean anything. I'm sorry. There's a lot of things that go into catches, and stats can be padded that way, and that's where you know I don't agree with that necessarily. Um, so that's where I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I made a top five list. I'm going to give you a bunch of number other names that I think are on the outside looking in, and that's where I'm maybe a little different, you know, than than others uh, that that view the wide receiver position. And I'll get into that a little bit as we talk about it as we Just go. Just because here. you have a whole bunch of catches doesn't mean you'll be on the list. No, it does not necessarily. Cooper Cup will be nowhere near this list. <laughs> yeah, oh, that, that, but that, might be that, an exception. Hey, it's <laughs> catches are good. We know that. Yes, you know yards certainly. Uh, what you do with the ball in your hands. You know, what you do and how many receptions you make, you know, when you're covered, how you get open, all of those things, the importance to your offense, the fear you put in defense. I think all that has to be played out. Like, you know, again, there's some receivers here that are not going to be in my top five where I'd go like, but like people are not valuing them the right way. Like to where I want to go, listen, you're, you're just, you're, you're looking at it and just looking at numbers and going, that's it. And I want to go some of these guys, and I don't want I don't want to give it up right now. But I want to just go. Yeah. Like if you put them with 
a good quarterback and they've been with nothing good or average or bad offenses and they've still had good stats, it's just going to blow up. Like, it's it's where I want to go, like, you know, like, let's just, who who do I want to take, for instance? Like, Terry McLaurin. You don't think Terry McLaurin's stats would have been a little bit better if he played in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers and that company? Do you Like, really? And do you not think Devontae Adams would have been a little less if he was in Washington with Fitzpatrick and Heineke and all these other guys? I mean, come on. That's where I just like people have, are like lose sight of that stuff at times where I just don't understand it. So that's what we'll have a little talk here, and uh, this should be a fun exercise. I mean, it is. Yeah, it's we, beauty in the eye of the beholder a little bit. No, I no, I get that. Yeah. But I'm saying it is. It, it's we all like to think like the numbers will end up evening out. It'll rise to the level of the talent, right? You're like, I know you don't have the quarterback, but if you're that good of a receiver, you're going to make it work anyway. You're going to figure out a way to make it work. Sure. It's just not possible in football, right? Yeah, just, right. You're just not going to make it work everything. to where you can go, oh, I'm going to lead the league in all category stats-wise. Like, right. no, yeah, you're right. You can't control that. You can't control who's calling the plays. You can't control your quarterback. Pass protection plays into this as well. You know, yeah, so... You know, again, there's a lot of things that go into that, and I think that's uh, why we, we this will be a good talk. It will, and you know, I, I, again, as in beauty in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, there's, there's, you know, I, I, I legitimately think there's 20 top 10 receivers in football. I do think, and I say that jokingly because we've had fun with that yeah. in the past. But I do think we could get to a really awesome offensive coordinator in the NFL and a guy that you and me sit here and go, oh, I think he's about 14 or 15. That offensive coordinator might go, well, for me, he's like eight or nine. And I understand that. It's a lot of talent at the position. There's no doubt. Yeah. But for me, I do think I have a top five that I feel like this is the top five. Maybe there should have been a six that is in there, and I'll get into his name and what that. But okay. but I feel pretty damn good about my top five for sure. When you were a quarterback, yeah, oh good, I want to get into this what, too. What was the right. receiver that you wanted? Who did you want? Did you want the big tall guy that could get those fifty fifty balls, or did you want the guy that you'd hit on a slant and could take it, you know, sixty like, yards? I, I'm more of the again. Love route runners, people who could do exactly, be precise. Coach taught it this way. He does it exactly that way. He never messes up according to the coverage and the little nuances of the routes. I love those guys. Don't get me wrong, right? But, yeah, I Aaron, on, I'd rather have the physical freak who is maybe not as good running the post corner or the slant return route for four yards as I would. I just go, I'd rather have the – I could just throw the ball 50 yards and he – catches it like okay the slant return route was cool but I can promise you the defense is much more scared of the other guy on the other side of the field that's running by people for huge gains rather than the guy that you know got four receptions on four slant returns for seven yards a piece right so I erred on that guy here's a perfect I mean I had Brandon Marshall right so Brandon Marshall certainly one guy that comes to just freak show and he wasn't necessarily the fastest but he was freaky everywhere else so it just didn't matter oh he's covered Throw it to Brandon. Oh, he's double covered? Throw it to Brandon. Oh, he might get his head knocked off over the middle? It's Brandon. He'll be okay. He'll knock their head off. You'll trade right? some speed for that for that ball catching ability. Or, oh, and what he can do after the catch, yep. right, and all that. And then his route running was really good. Sure. That's where people don't realize. I mean, he was special. But here's another example I'll give you. I'm in Tampa. And this is no disrespect to anybody. This is ultimate respect. Keenan McCardle had him there, right? Awesome. Keenan McCardle is that guy. Precise route runner, perfect route runner, can catch 105 balls a year, do everything John Gruden said, any offensive coordinator, he'll read the right coverage, all of that. That's really cool. That's awesome. I want him in my offense. But I don't want him in my offense more than I want Joey Galloway, who won't run all those routes exactly right. But, man, if you press him man-to-man, -man, it's over. It's It's over. He's going to run by you, or you're going to be so scared he's going to run by you that I'm going to throw him a slant, but you're going to still be running the go route, and he's going to be going that way. So, yeah, I'll trade off some of the things that Keenan McCardell was so precise with the route running for the guy that, yeah, was a little lesser in those departments, but brought, like, open the field, explosion to our offense, made the defense play defenses they don't want to play that didn't necessarily end up being great for his stat sheet – and got other people the ball, but that doesn't mean he wasn't as effective that day. 
And that's where I think people mess, miss it sometimes. And to me, yes, again, love Keenan McCardle, no disrespect. Yes, but a Joey Galloway type was right. more my guy. And two years ago, Tyreek Hill was number one for you. Explosive speed, yes, game changer. Right. Doesn't have that jump ball 50-50 stuff. No, ability, right, right. But was still number one because he did all that other stuff so Exactly well right, right. Well, I mean, all right, so we're talking about receiver here. You know, and sometimes people go like, well, receiver, or like, well, like what are we talking about? Uh, well, I don't know. Receivers this day and age are asked to run reverses, speed sweeps, toss sweeps, get yards on screens. Yes, run go routes, we know that. You know, yes, the, all the intricate routes we just talked about, slant returns and all the double move, move, move movements and all that stuff. Yeah, but that's that's all of it. Like so I I don't like when people go, well, He's not a real receiver. He's just a weapon. I, well, f then sign me up for the weapons. I yeah. don't know what to say because I'd rather have the guy I can give the reverse to to run for 60 yards over the guy, again, who's going to run the most precise seven-yard route ever. I don't care. I'll trade the explosive nature and the playmaking ability of the other guy and some of the unrefined maybe route running for the – you know, I'll, I'll take that guy over the perfect route runner type guy. All right, let's do it. We've yeah. made the homies wait long enough. Let's do it. Your top five wide receivers of 2022 going into the year. Yeah, right. You reserve, the year. you reserve the right to change your mind during the year. Well, yeah, I'm just, well, I'm going into the year. And, you yeah. know, again, just like the quarterbacks, it's a little bit like, hey, uh, you know, growth. It's one, year one into year two. Yep. You play all that into it. So, number five for me is going to be Cooper Cup right off the bat. Yes, Cooper Cup is phenomenal, right? He's definitely a top five receiver in football. He gets disrespected in a lot of ways. People will probably think I'm disrespecting him by making him number five. Well, that's the funny thing. If you said this last year, people would be like, what? Cooper yeah. Cup's top five, right. and now you're going to say it, and they're going to go, what? He's not number one or I two know. Right. or three? Yep. He's not number one or number two or number three for me. No, he's not. You know, he's – really in the conversation for maybe the most complete receiver as far as there's no weakness to his football game. There's none. There's no one area you can look at and go, oh, wow, he doesn't do that well. He's bigger than you think. He's bigger than you think. Exactly right. So 50-50 balls, back shoulder balls, catching the ball over the middle in traffic, it's all really good. The route running is up there of the Devontae Adams level type route running. It's every bit as good as that. All right. So he's special with all that type of stuff. He's smart as hell. We know his hands are phenomenal. And then to me, what puts him in the top five over some other guys that, you know, maybe have a little more physical ability or, you know, pure and physical ability. But this guy has all the other stuff we talked about. And maybe I'm not phrasing this quite the right way. As Cooper Cup has more physical ability than he's given credit for. That's the Got one it. thing, again, that just constantly, like going back and watching him. 10 days ago and then even as you came in today the office I said hey I'm just sitting here watching some highlights and writing a few other notes down just things like that the physical ability is real I mean I, I you know again this is not just some you know white system wide receiver where we have to devise seven formations and and crisscross receivers to get my guy open for a six-yard gain no I mean oh it's a big moment in the Super Bowl it's a fourth down reverse to Cooper Cup oh it's a big moment against the Bucks. Go deep on a post route and beat everybody with your speed for a huge game. Oh, it's a big move moment against the 49ers. Throw him a screen and he'll break tackles and run upfield and get 15 or 20 yards. So it's not like he's just a refined receiver. He does not get enough uh, credit in my for in my you know opinion sure. for the pure physical raw ability and the size like you're talking about that's really a skill. Yeah, what is the size? Do we know the exact uh well, I'm going to say 62 and change. You're going it might six be 63. It might even be 63. If Pete, you want me to look it up or you want to look it up. All Pete's, right. Pete's on it right now. He he led the NFL last year with 1947 yards. The next closest was Justin Jefferson with 1600. 62208. Six, yeah. 62. Yeah. Six, I mean two. that's big. I mean I think some people would think Cooper Cup under six feet. Yeah, it's a big six two too. Like to where you know it's it's broad shoulders, it's long arms, it's pretty thick legs and butt. Like it's not just like, yeah, it's not some jitter bug, and you know he's not just some skinny skinny guy. I mean it, it's it's real. It really is. And 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 you know, again, I think he's been dancing around the top five ish the last few years, 10-ish in that conversation. But, you know, two, just like Matthew Stafford a little bit, but vice versa here, 
he needed a quarterback to kind of show all the things he can do. You know, again, Sean McVay and company can only dial up so many four-yard flat routes for Cooper Cup and the Jared Goff offense. Yeah. So now he gets to show the whole, you know, variety of route running ability that he has with him. And I think he showed his ass last year and showed you how damn good he is. In 2020, he was under 1,000 yards. Yeah. Did have a 1,000-yard season in 2019, but nothing compared to what he did last year at uh, 1,900. So he led the league in receiving uh, yards and receptions. We'll talk a little bit about who you think could uh, challenge him maybe maybe this year, but he's number five on your list yeah. in 2022. Who's number four? Number four is Justin Jefferson. All right, Minnesota Vikings. Jefferson in a lot of ways, a lot like Cooper Cup. It's a complete wide receiver. It really is. Route running is special. Again, just like Cooper Cup. It's up there in the Devontae Adams that, that, you know, these guys are special that way. But to me where, like, Justin Jefferson separates himself is, you know, Jefferson, you can put him on the outside and people play him one-on-one and he will run by you or get open either way. So he can win with just pure physical ability. It's not always about, hey, we got to put him in this position and let him run this route against this coverage, and then he'll get open. They can just go, hey, just line the f*** up out there. And when you get man, Kurt's coming to you, like period. And that to me is, you know, that's special. That is. So, one, you put him out there, he can run by you for, for a big game. He's phenomenal 50-50 back shoulders. I mean, he's in the conversation for as good as anybody in football. So there we have pure speed and then size, ball adjustment, right, to go do that. He can take the top off defenses on post routes and do all of that as well. And then when you get into all the underneath stuff, the slant returns and all that, he's phenomenal. He is phenomenal. I mean, he is like a very detailed, precise route runner, right? He's not the best with yards after the catch. All right, I'll say that. It's probably like out of the guys we're going to talk about here. And even with Cooper Cup, I think he's probably less than in that department with the ball in his hand. But I think he beats Cooper Cup in the ability just to beat man-to-man pure coverage on the outside. And he beats Cooper Cup in the ability, in my opinion, of like, hey, he's covered or there's two guys on him. Let's just throw it up. And he goes up and gets it anyways. That to me is where Justin Jefferson's really, really damn good. His yards after catch is good. It's not special like those guys, but damn, it's still really damn good. And I think you add that with his size. Again, he's yeah. 6'3, so he's a little bit taller than Cooper Cup. Uh, and I think, yeah, just as a route runner and without the ball in his hand, he can really separate that way. He's listed as 6'1. Is he really? Yeah. Mm. Just plays bigger than Let's that. Let's know. 195. I'm going to look this up right now. That's Let's just make football. sure. That's on football reference. All right. Well, I've never even heard of that, so that's a problem. What do you mean? Pro football reference? you never uh, heard of that? Oh, yeah, I've heard pro of that. Pro football. Right. I just left All right. So, pro. wait. Here, yeah. I'm on I'm on NFL Jesus, which is run by the NFL, mm -hmm. and he he's 6'3", 192 on here. All right. So, he's grown two inches since right. uh, pro football <laughs> reference last uh, last measured him. Is that what he came out in the NFL Combine? Let's just uh, just say, I mean, teams don't really lie about height of players. That's not a thing in the NFL. Wow. Vikings roster six one one nine. All right, so there he is. NFL Jesus lied to Man, us. Man, well, of I've seen, all sites to like, lie to I've us. I've seen him in person too, and it just does not seem that size. You know what? Maybe they're sandbagging. Maybe they're like, oh, we can have our you, slot, you know, our nickel guy right, cover him because right. he's only six one. Show up on game day, he's 6'3". Wow. Well, well, maybe we'll get to the bottom of that either but, way. But, hey, I can confirm his uh, yards after catch averaged a four and a half this past year. He was like five the year before. So that actually did go down a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yards after catch. Not, right. Not going in the wrong direction well, there. Well, so there's more attention to him. He became that's the true. number one guy there this year officially. You know, I think the year before that you get the you get the – Hey, he's a rookie. They got Adam Thielen. We're worried about him. So he got a lot of like, you know, easy underneath catches with some space where it wasn't quite that way this year. And especially with Adam Thielen being hurt and having to deal with some injuries there, too. Right. And it still didn't really matter on a week to week basis. Um, yeah, to me, this is definitely one of the best young receivers in the game and no doubt top five in my money. So I don't know your full list. Right. But I'm assuming Stefan Diggs is not in your top. Five. He's not. So when he when the Vikings let him go. Yeah. Right. And right. You draft Justin Jefferson. You're like, oh, maybe he can replace him. Hopefully right. he can't replace Stefan Diggs. Well, it turns out here we are two years later. Yeah. He replaced it and then some. Yeah, and Diggs is really damn good, and he's still really damn good. Yeah, he's not going to make my top five. But, yeah, Jefferson, you know, again, 
You know, I, I think that's the thing is it, it's unique in the fact that, you know, again, he's bigger than a, than a, a Stefan Diggs. But it's unique in the fact that you can have a skill set, again, like we talked about, where you can just win with your pure, pure physical ability and get open or not be open and still catch the ball. But then when you can move into the slot and be like, well, shit, he's one of the better slot receivers in football too. That, that's a special thing. And, yeah, he's not as explosive as maybe some of these three guys we're going to talk about here in a second and all of that. But – he also, I think, in some ways can get open in some routes that those guys can't too that, you know, is in his favor as well. But really, really a hell of a receiver, complete receiver. You know, rare blend of a guy that can use everything that a system has to offer and also can just do it with great physical ability too. And there's probably more he has to offer if he got around. Like, we'll see it this year because he's now, to me, going to be with an offensive coordinator that's going to put more routes on his route tree, hmm. and he's going to be asked to see that. So I think you're going to see a more of a variety of what he's asked to do this year than years past. Numbers have been pretty good. 1,600 yeah. yards last year in a run-first offense yeah. with Delvin Cook there. Right. He was number two in receiving yards. Number three in receiving yards was Devontae Adams last year. So we've gone Cup, five for you. We've gone Jefferson, four. Do we have Devontae Adams at three? No, he will not be number three. Okay. I'm sorry. Just, nope. Okay. Um, number three is going to go, I'm going to go with Tyree Kill. Yeah. Oh, he's dropped from one to three. Yeah, he has. He's going to be number three. He's still, you know, amazing. And again, I just think he's still in that conversation for the most explosive receiver in football, the greatest weapon in football. Yes, you know, again, like I said, can he, like, we're going back to the Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup. Can he run some of those routes the same way? No. When you see him run some of the shorter type routes, precise that way, they're not great always. They're not. You know, you, you run the slant route. Let's just say you run the slant return route, right? I'm just, that's the one I'm using because that's always a precise route. You run a slant, you get to that six yards, you come flat out at six yards, right? You can break out of it. Yeah, you watch like Tyree Kill do it, it never comes out flat. He fades away, he never comes out exactly crisp and clean on the breaks that way with those type of things. So that's where he's not, you know, in the same level as a Justin Jefferson or a Cooper Cup. But I mean, again, you know, I mean, he's uncoverable almost one on one. You know, and again, that's all the other things he does too. Yeah, I mean, go route certainly. Nobody one on one. He can run by anybody. Post routes, we know that. You know, again, with the ball in his hands, he's in the conversation for still the best in football when that comes to it. I mean, again, to me, what we saw him do in the Bills game, catch the in cut, and zoom, there's the two guys we're going to talk about in a minute. Are the only two other two guys in football that can do that kind of crap. You know, or catch a curl route in the middle of the field, and there's seven guys around him, and we watch him, and we're, we're sitting there watching on a Sunday going, oh, he might get out of this. I mean, nobody does that like he does. It's special, except for maybe the other two guys we're about to talk about. So, you know, that, that's where he's great. His hands are solid. He plays bigger than you expect. He is good at going up and getting balls, 50-50 balles for a guy that's 5'10-ish in that range. He is. His vertical. I mean, I don't His know. His vertical is insane. Got to be right. insane. His hands are the least out of the top five. Nobody catches drops more on target passes than Tyree Kill. I mean, nobody. He just he doesn't always attack the ball. He can let the ball get into his body and pop up in the air. I mean, he cost Patrick Mahomes a handful of interceptions this year. There's just balls that hit him in the face, hit him in the hands. He popped up in the air. Uh, so that's where he's not necessarily as good. Yeah, he can't, even though he's small. I mean, I said he plays big. He's not a guy you can definitively, like, depend on to throw a back shoulder ball to all the time. Like, not to the, the level of, like, we just talked about with Cooper Cup or Justin Jefferson. So those are his weaknesses, you know. So, yeah, you know, but again, I mean, I just – I prefer this type of guy. I do. And I'll, I'll take a, I'll take away some of the other, like we talked about, detailed, nuanced route running for some of the explosive things he can bring to the table. It's going to be fascinating, yeah. right, just to see how different he looks with a new quarterback. And yeah. With Tua now, obviously, a step down from from Patrick Mahomes. And um, part of it is, too, it, he's 28 years old. The last guy, what, Justin's 23, I think, still. He's yeah. still super young. Yeah. It, it just illustrates what a young man's game football still is right and almost for Tyreek the fact that he's dropped from one to three is not a bit I mean it just shows you it's almost like when you get to be the number one player at your position it's downhill from there well I, th I do think sometimes people rate the guy that's been around for a little while too high sure 
just because he's been there and they see stats and whatever else. See, this is to your point, I think. And then we don't give enough credit to go like, no, the guy in year two is actually, this is the best year he's going to have in his life. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's, he's, he's as fast as ever right now. He's as fresh as ever right now. Yeah. Don't, and, don't, don't bank on in five years he'll be even better. Like, no, this might right. be. Or don't discredit him just because it's like, oh, I've sure. only seen him do it one year. Like, uh, okay, so what? I don't know. Jerry Rice in year two was the best receiver in football. Randy Moss was the best one in year one. Yeah. After, the, after four minutes of watching football, everybody in football went, they're their new best receiver in football with Randy Moss. I don't care who's been here for nine years and had 10,000 catches. doesn't matter. Yeah, I think sometimes people like uh, don't don't um, yeah they don't look at that enough. The young guy coming up the pipe. It's running back is that position too. Uh, but I do think this was the year, and I said this during the season last year. I don't know if it was you or Mike or that the changing the guard at receiver it happened. It had happened like it kind of happened last year. But I don't think any longer where like yeah the DeAndre Hopkins the the AJ Greens the Julio Jones they were replaced for the guys that you think are a top five receivers in football other the new guys replaced them in my opinion uh, I I do think that happened last year yeah Mike and- Evans probably a guy that you know 2020 I, I had in top five and for sure he's still really damn good but he's not going to be on this list in the top five. Yeah, I think some of these young young bucks have, have surpassed him a little bit. You think that we're going to be able to see Tyreek make some jaw-dropping plays? Will they get as much out of Tyreek Hill as the Chiefs were able to get out I, of Tyreek Hill? I do think we're going to see jaw-dropping plays. Th- this is where I do wonder, like, we're not going to see as many, uh, you know, bombs down the field in that way. But McDaniel, with what he's learned from Shanahan – I do think we might be able to see Tyree kill in space and intermediate and shorter routes maybe a little bit more often than we did in, in Kansas City. And that, to me, could be dangerous, definitely. You know, and I think yeah, you couple that with a good running game and, oh, we got to worry about Jalen Waddell over here too. You know, that, that yes. You know, I'm not expecting maybe as many, you know, down the field 30 and 40-yard passes, right. but maybe we get a, a bunch of – Eight-yard completions. Oh, crap, though. He's in the middle of the field with nobody around him, and he might be able to make something special happen that way. So Tyreek Hill, not number one, but he is still in your top three. Yeah. Not in your top two. No. Which we're at right now. Top two wide receivers in 2022. Debo Samuel's number two. Wow. Yeah. Debo Samuel, to me, right now, I mean, you know, maybe the best weapon at receiver in football. He might have taken that, 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 that mantle from Tyree Kill, the guy that I used to go, oh, it doesn't matter. Just throw him a slant, give him a reverse, just get the ball in his hands. Now, uh, to me, that's Debo Samuel. You know, I think without a doubt, he's the best receiver in football with the ball in his hands. The guy we have at number one rivals him, but where Debo, to me, you know, Debo's got a physical nature about him, too. That's different than the rest of the receivers. Debo can run over a strong safety or a linebacker, yep. you know, on a third and four, whether it's a slant route or a toss sweep. Uh, so that, that to me, is, like, special. You know, and, again, a guy that I don't think gets quite enough credit for the route running. You know, I, I don't. I know, like, listen, he might not be Cooper Cup or, or, or Devontae Adams or Justin Jefferson or all that, too. But it's not, like, it's not bad. You know, he's a better route runner, in my opinion, than Tyree Kill, for sure. He is. Now, the, the, the reason I feel like he doesn't get quite the credit, too, sometimes is because they don't throw the ball outside the numbers. So you don't get to see those type of routes with him all the time. He's always running something, screaming over the middle, right? And I don't know, is there a better receiver in traffic in football with people around him? Oh, you're going to get your head knocked off, still catch it and run 100 miles per hour for us? No, there's nobody. And then, you know, a, a receiver where you go – well, this quarterback can't even throw it deep. We know he's going to catch the ball right here in this area, but it doesn't matter. He gets 20 yards every time he f- touches the ball, right? And, you know, breaks tackles. His acceleration is up there with Tyreek and the guy we're going to talk about at number one. Maybe not a top end pure speed. But again, I, I don't know. You know, he's one where I think the stats say a lot for him. You know, uh, you know just 18, point, 18 yards per catch. Yeah, and he, and for 18 yards per catch, probably was getting the most the least amount of air yards through those receptions. You know, it's just screen plays, the toss sweeps, everything about it. Again, to me, that's what a receiver is in the NFL anymore. We're not in the just receivers are only like Jerry Rice mold anymore. It's 2022. We've moved on. It, there's there, there's more we ask here. 
of the receiver now. And part of being a receiver, in my opinion, is the weapon factor. And Debo Samuel, you know, yes, you can use him in more ways than, than just about anybody in the game right now. And who now. knows, maybe this year you talked about throwing over the I middle know. a lot. I, I mean, think this we'll could see be that. the year where right. Trey Lance – Outside the numbers. Outside the numbers. This could be the year you see more 20-yard outs, 15-yard out routes. So you're saying he could look even better. I, he could. He definitely could. And, you know, again, you see the speed to just run by people with pure, like, post routes. And even though, like, you know, his hips – and stuff might be not like the loose like Justin Jefferson. Like where Jefferson and Devontae Adams, they can kind of shake their body and then boom, put their foot in the ground and just come out. And you're like, man, which way are they going here? This is amazing. His is a little different. But it's effective in a lot of ways. So the hips and the loosey-goosiness might not be there. But his ability to like, okay, he's running 4-4. Four, four, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, he's turning it on. He's about to run 4-2. Oh, wait, he put on the brakes, and oh, my God, he restarted, and he's running 4-2 again. That is what gets him open and is special. And, yes, even though the hips and all that might be there, his explosion in and out of brakes and can put his foot in the ground and cut that way is what makes him really effective. Part of his value, too, is the uh, how effective he was at running the football. Yes. Sometimes running even between the tackles, you know, running right up the middle. Kyle used him in, in various ways like that. How many rushes did he have well, last and that, year? I've had people go, well, is 59. that? 59. 59, right, right. For what? How many yards? 365 yards. Yeah. I mean, and then, you know, again, that's impressive when you talk about, oh, Six he's that tailback and we know he's going to get the ball. But here's the thing. Yeah. You believe reports out there. Yeah. I think Ian Rappaport reported this not that long ago that what he is hearing is that some of the issues that Debo is, is having – um, and who knows if this is true or not? Yeah, I don't know. Is this. that maybe he doesn't have the desire right. to do that anymore? We don't know. I mean, who knows if that's true? If that's the real story? If that's the whole story? Yeah. But just take for a fact that take say it is. Yeah. Say he doesn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. That's a big part of his value, or at least some part of his value. It's a huge part of his value. That's so, what I'm trying to. That's what we're trying to say here. Where would he be on your list if he said, "I don't want to do that anymore"? Well. Would he still be in your top five? I think he probably would be still in my top five because he's still going to catch slants and screens and yeah. do all that, and that's really where he makes his money anyways. You know, again, take away the running plays. It's still a phenomenal year. Sure. It's insane. And like I said, it, it may be being asked to do more with less in a lot of ways than as compared to the other receivers. Hey, catch this ball here and break seven tackles and then turn on the afterburners and run away from everybody for 60 yards. I mean, that's, that's what he does. It's, it's a crazy, crazy skill set he has that way. And that's the point I'm trying to make, too, to you is here is, you know, again, yeah, I, the, the normal mold of receiver, everybody's got to get out of that. Receivers now are being asked to do these things. So if you can't do them, to me, you're not as good as a receiver as the guy that can. You know, and that, don't that, tell me that. Tell Debo that. Well, I know. Tell him so, that. but Debo, this is I can understand him having a little bit of a pause about taking that many hits. All right. Mm -hmm. So I could see them maybe going, okay, hey, we're, we we won't give you the ball as many times a game. He only played seven games in 2020. Right. So he wants to watch himself that way. But I have a hard time still. Like, how many times did we get done with games last year? And Shanahan went. It was a third down, and Debo just said, "Give me the ball." Like, was he not going to do that this year? Like, bullshit. Of course he is. So maybe he doesn't want the ball as less. Maybe he's going to be a little more picky about it. I'm sure Shanahan will, especially when they pay him a lot of money. They're yeah. going to want to try, try to make him last. They're not going to want to kill him, right? They're going to want to get their investment back for that. So I do think it'll be less carries and less car crashes that way, but I still think it's going to be a part of the offense. He and George Kittle, both on the same team. I know. Both of the receivers where when they catch the ball and they have a desire, which yeah. I'm not questioning their desire, but it's the end of the game. They need the big game. It's like those guys seem like two it's of the nasty, hardest right? guys to take down. I agree. In football. Right. They have like, uh, like that desire that want to, you know, right. not just pure physical brute strength, but just a desire. And it is. It is a strength. fire that burns in them. You're right. There's a will there. And then a, a, a carelessness for their body. That, that I think is what that pushes them over the edge. And hey, I mean, again, you're talking about it. This is why the 49ers, one of the things I talked about with Foria today is like it's to me one of the training camp storylines is yeah this quarterback situation Trey Lance what he does all that I and mean, the 49ers are are really damn good they're a Super Bowl football team with a quarterback question and conundrum right now that's rare it really is and I mean you just said it it's it's arguably the best tight end in football you can talk to some people in football and tell you it's the best receiver in football Brandon Ayuk is no slouch you got the best left tackle in football with a bunch of other good linemen, you know? 
You got maybe the best pass rusher, the best middle linebacker. I mean, they're stacked, and they have a quarterback issue and some contract issues here too. So that's it's it is kind of fascinating what's going on in there in, in 49er land. So real quick, how do you yeah. think it's going to play out here? Because there was a time where he did request a trade, right? You yeah, know, you're, you're tight with Kyle. Yeah. Give us the inside scoop. Here. Well, I, I just I get the sense, as I've really said from the beginning, right? Again, I saw Kyle this summer, all right? They're not really talk about his football team, right? He's happy with where they are, right? Again, I'm not going to, like, get into specifics about it. He doesn't want to talk that about with me. But as I always said with Kyle, I, Kyle's a master communicator. Players love playing for him. I think you know that by just – because you used to work out there and you you know yeah. people and you hear things. He's just real. He's real. He's a real guy. And the real modern-day player really relates to him that way. And I think he always had confidence. I don't really know what went wrong. I'm not sure if they really know what went wrong. But I think he always had faith that, like, hey, if I just keep the communication going with this guy and he knows who I am, it'll get worked out. And it just feels like we're going that way. And I just can't imagine for either side not wanting to make it happen. I mean, I – I know Kyle. I know what kind of players he loves. He loves players like Debo Samuel. He loves them, right? And I, players like Debo Samuel usually love Kyle Shanahan because he's just like, you're the man. I'm going to get you the ball every way. You're the man. You're the man. Yeah. Lead our team. Go out on the damn – out of the locker room with the boom backs on your shoulder, whatever the hell you want, but <laughs> just keep making plays. And the players love that. Yeah. And I just – that's why I think it's, it's inevitable. Number two wide receiver in football. Yeah, according to Chris Sims. According to Chris Sims, but he's not number one. I know he's not a. a he's he's definitely in the top ten. Okay, I know that because I think Madden didn't have him in the top ten, and oh, that's is insane. That what, yeah, yeah. What was it? They had. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I don't I, exactly they went know. All, maybe. They had yeah. Devonte at a ninety nine. Ooh, yeah, right. they had him as the best wide receiver in football, or I guess they might have had multiple ninety nines. No, he's the only one. I think he was the only ninety nine. Yeah. Wow, yeah. he was the only ninety nine. Yeah, Devonte Adams not even going to make your top five. No, he's not. Okay, he'd make my top ten. All right, we'll he wouldn't in, make my top six. We'll get into your honorable yeah. mentions here in a second. Right, but first, this is the crescendo. Yeah. The crescendo moment. Blah, 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 blah. Number one, uh, like no brainer here for me. It's it's Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is the best receiver in football. It was an easy number one for It was you. an easy number one. It was one of those where I went, oh, Jamar Chase is definitely top three. And then you go back and watch the year and you go, oh, no, he's one. He's actually one. He is, like, right there rivaling the Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup in the route running department. He's uncoverable one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody can cover Jamar Chase one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody. Nobody in football. Just ask Jalen Ramsey in the Super Bowl. You know, I mean, again, Jam I mean, Jamar Chase might be the MVP of the Super Bowl if Aaron Donald doesn't get there on the sack in the, in the end of the game with Jalen Ramsey falling down. He is uncoverable, and he can do it all. So he can run precise routes. Great. Oh, you want to cover him one on one? Good night. It's over. He's gonna run by you. Touchdown. Oh, you want to play him one on one and stop the go route? And they're not even gonna change their route, and they're still gonna run the go route. Jump ball, back shoulder. It's off the charts. Good. With the ball in his hands, it rivals Debo. Maybe not the breaking the tackles, but he's faster. He's in the conversation with Tyree Kill as far as pure speed. You know, again, what I will always say is there's just all you got to do is, I mean, again, there's how many people in football can run a 360 slant route and, and crawl over four people and then outrun the whole Ravens defense for an 80-yard touchdown? Or catch a 10-yard out round against the Chiefs who have like three guys in their secondary who run 4-2. Catch it in the middle of the field, and all those guys are around him, and him just go, none of you can catch me. I'm going to outrun every one of you. Zoom, even though you had the head start. And he's amazing that way. He can break tackles. I think we're going to see more of the weapon stuff. I think you'll see more tosses and reverses as we go along here. But, yeah, for my money, it's the best receiver in football. He ended it that way, and I think it's only going to get better. So we should all remember, because I think the big story in training camp last year was yeah. how he had drops. Right. Right. It was right. like, uh-oh. Right. Maybe he took the year off. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's a little rusty. Kind of like we took five weeks off. Maybe we're a little rusty. Um, what's going on? They, they should not have taken him number five. I was looking at the draft now because at the time the argument um, was was where should where should he go? How high yeah. should he go? Right, right. Penny Sewell should the Bengals take him? Exactly, Penny Sewell. That was the big one. The yeah. Lions, you know, they got Penny Sewell at seven. Jamar Chase went at five. You say he's the number one wide receiver 
in football right now. Yeah. I think a lot of people would agree with you, except for Madden, as you mentioned, right? <laughs> Wasn't he one of the <laughs> He's like the 11 or 12. It's crazy. Um, it went Trevor Lawrence. It went Zach Wilson. It went Trey Lance. It went Kyle Pitts. It went Jamar Chase. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, how high would you reasonably take Jamar Chase? Well, it's always hard with the quarterback conversation. I know. I know. But, yeah, that type of talent, to your point, You'd I know what you're saying. You have to think about it. Like, if you're Jacksonville, like, I don't know. You need that franchise quarterback. I get it. I get it. But, man, if you, uh, you're you talking number one wide well, receiver in football. If you – right. If you had your franchise quarterback or it's a, let's just say it's a draft that there's that guy's not there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I guess what we're basically saying is, like, you know, is a guy like Jamar Chase and that talent worthy of a top two or three pick? Yeah, I do. I think so. You know, in this day and age in the NFL, I, I do. I mean, again, he's he changed their football team. I know Joe Burrow special too. But again, this is where not only are the stats eye popping and wow and yards per catch and all the touchdowns and everything there, but what I would really love to show people is just go, man, come in here and watch and just watch like this game here and where this defense had to change the way they were playing and the coverages they were they had to change it because they just said we, we can't do it anymore. We, we can't do this to our corner. He's got no chance against Jamar Chase one on one. And and then Tyler Boyd or, you know, T Higgins get the catch. And we take away the credit from from the guy like Jamar Chase at the end of the game and go, well, he only had four catches today. Well, right. yeah, they've you know they yeah. played a defense that was all about that. Where you know there's other guys here on the list again where I could sit here and, and just go, hey, these guys are good. That's right. But they they yeah they had seven catches and they had 70 yards, but they didn't have the effect of the game that Jamar Chase did with his three catches for 55 yards. You know, they this guy had the seven catches for 70 yards, but they played a man the whole game. They never did anything special to cover him that way. And if Jamar Chase got played that way, it would have been 14 for 300 yards. So that's where like people lose sight of that. And that's where the numbers can lie a little bit, too, at times at the position. But yeah, for my money, Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel are definitely the top two receivers in football. And Jamar Chase uh, is is the man right now. Think of that team back at LSU. Right. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow. Yeah. I know. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, what was Joe Burrow in Clyde your... Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Where did you have Joe Burrow? It was he I had him four... one. Oh, this year, four, right? Four, yeah. right? Four, He's yeah. f number four quarterback in the NFL. In the NFL. And you've got a number four wide receiver in the NFL. Right. And the number one wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah. All on that college team. It's insane. It really is. It really, I mean, of course, we know that was one of the best teams ever. And that's, that's one still... You know, the funniest thing I'll always remember about that team... Well, it just... I don't even know why I'm going there. I was just going to say the the one thing I always remember is people killing the corner from Atlanta, AJ Terrell. Oh yes, because he because Jamar Chase <laughs> yeah. caught three touchdowns on him, yeah. and he was all over him. Yeah, and I wanted to be like, damn, he covered him as good as anybody I've seen cover him in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. He caught three touchdowns. One was like a push off. The other one, they kind of tangled feet and he tripped and fell. But I remember NFL evaluators going, well, I know, but man, he had a tough day that day against LSU. Now I want to be like, this guy's like freak show the receiver and he was with them the whole game right right so uh and he's awesome as is proven it'll be, to be easier for him once he gets to the nfl well well i mean that's you know sometimes you got to <laughs> evaluate who they're going against and and what it's like there but yeah phenomenal football player and i think what you see too a little bit at least with my top three yeah and i think this is the trend that's going on in the nfl and it's going to continue i see it even in high school right now going to camps and stuff over the last few weeks Kids that are built like running backs that go, I'm not playing running back. I'm playing receiver. Like, well, mm -hmm. why would I play running back? Get me out in space. Get me out in space. Why would I get killed like that? I'm only going to get one contract. Like, these kids are going, no, the hell with that. Get me. Let me be a receiver. I can play 12 years, 14 years, and I'll still be able to walk and be good when I'm 52, and I'm going to make a ton more money and have every bit of effect on the football game. And I think that's what you're seeing with these guys. Chase Samuel and Hill are built like running backs. Hmm. They really are. You know, guys on the outside looking in. You want to get on that conversation a little bit? So if you're a, if you're a kid out there, yeah, make sure you can catch the ball. Yes. Or else you're going to be put at running no back. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Like, I bet you Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel are running backs all the way until high school, late high school, early college, something like that. I do. The DJ Moores of the world. Yeah. Same type of thing. DJ Moore is the guy that I would probably say is the next one off my list. Okay, so let's get into honorable yeah. mention. Youth is so... Just outside the top five, yeah. DJ Moore for yeah. you. Yeah, DJ Moore is 
he's like he is a physical freak. I mean, again, a guy, don't let the numbers fool you. Again, look at the offenses and quarterbacks he's been involved in. It's not the greatest situation in the world. You know, but you know, it's it's he's got a lot of Jamar Chase type qualities. In fact, this has just popped in my head here as I'm thinking about this, and Pete could verify at the Super Bowl, I asked Michael Parsons who's the best player he played in the NFL this year, and he said DJ Moore. Wow. All right. So there you go. That's a freak show of a linebacker telling you. So DJ Moore is that kind of special type of football player. But, you know, DJ Moore, to your point that way, A.J. Brown's that way, you know. Again, another guy that's just, you know, off the list here. Okay. You know, DJ Moore, D.K. Metcalf, A.J. Brown, Devontae Adams, you know, Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans. Those are the next guys off the list for me. You know, Stephon Diggs, Jalen Waddell, Mike Williams, Tyler Lockett. That, I, that would be my honorable mentions right there. Yeah. And, again, there's some other ones there. You go, damn, they're good, and I'm not even talking about them. Who aren't you talking about? Well, I mean, like, then there's the next level of maybe the T. Higgins and the Deontay Johnsons of the world. Um, you know, C.D. Lamb, right? Yeah, the, like the, that group of guys there to where, yeah, I'm not going to quite put them in the list of these guys there, but still really damn Keenan Allen. You know, that kind of guy, that, you know, still awesome receivers. Right. But to me, not in the top 10, 12 conversation, maybe more in the top 20-ish conversation, but still, like, awesome. So that's the argument that we have around draft time, yeah. too, is that there are so many good yeah. wide receivers that you can see in the right system, they can be awesome. And maybe, who knows, maybe they'll lead the league in receiving yards, maybe they'll be in the top five or top ten. Right. Um, that how valuable are the top end? Now, I think you've made the case here pretty well that getting one of those top five receivers is still super valuable. Even though there's a bunch of honorable mentions here, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, Stephon Diggs, you know, that are very, very good receivers. Yeah. You still think that having one of those top five that you mentioned, those elite of the elite, is a, is a difference maker. It is. Game it's a changer. game changer. It's a game changer. You're exactly right. It is. With the way the, the league set up, the rules, and then, you know, again – the fact of we don't need the most precise route to get open anymore. We have an offensive coordinator, or there's a lot of ways to get the ball into these guys' hands now and let them do their thing. And that you can't discount that. You just you can. I, that's to me where people are like dropping the ball a little bit in this conversation. Um, so yeah, you know, again, like I love Devonte Adams. He's going to be awesome with the Raiders this year. He's going to be awesome. But like. The Raiders, to me, are one of the few teams that are going to be able to really take advantage of all that he can bring. Not every offense could. You know, it's Josh McDaniels. They have every route under the sun, and they're the greatest route running teaching people I've ever seen in New England. Anybody would tell you that has been around that group. So, uh, you know, that's why Brady has made Brady awesome in Tampa. He's coaching those receivers, too. I'll tell you what, if Devontae right. Adams does go out there, and if that's true about the coaching, and they're able to find more ways to get him open, and 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 he have, has almost even a better year statistically than he did with yeah, Green Bay. Right. There are going to be a lot of people saying, man, I, I it know. was, it was he's, Devontae. He's, he's the number one receiver. He's done it with Aaron Rodgers. Now he went over and did it in Las he, Vegas. It, listen, he's going to have 110 or 120 catches this year. I can promise you that. Yeah. It's Josh McDaniels. He's not gonna, he, he, Josh is smart, too. He's going to go, wait, I traded and got get all this money. I gave all this money to this guy. Like I, I'm gonna, We're going to use him. They're going to they're gonna wear him out. But this is what I would like to say to where even though there's all that and I get it, Josh McDaniels, even though he's going to have all the offense to get, you know, Devontae Adams the ball and he can run all those routes, he, he could very easily just come up with plays to go, let me get the ball to Debo Samuel and, and, and Jamar Chase right here too, and they're going to do special stuff. So don't, don't, don't forget that, yeah. you know. Not to say that, and also they can't do some of that route running too. That's to me where people are missing that. They are they're missing that, you know. So we'll see. Adams has been in an offense that's been about even in Green Bay. It was about precision and route running and all that, you know. And I again really like him. It's it's not like I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's just not my cup of tea right. at the position as I've tried to explain to you. And I think you've seen that a little bit, like to me in some of the big games. I do think you see that in some of the big games where 
big games, good defense, who's got a pretty good corner or something like that, yep. you don't see Devontae Adams like show up necessarily all the time that way. Ooh. And that does bother me. I, it's not necessarily always on him. Sure. I don't mean to say that. But, you know, there is some system, system reliance as compared to, like I said, with like, you know, Debo, Jamar Chase. Hey, he's one-on-one. -on -one. We're just throwing to him. I don't care what route he's got. We're, right. we're going to him. Period. Teams that's, can that's sometimes just not always take the way. away. You yeah. know, uh, do we have do Pete? Do we have that tweet from Devonte from uh, from last year? Do we have that? Uh, uh, do we yeah. have that anywhere? Because I almost feel like uh, it's coming back. Knows, it's going to come back. <laughs> it's yeah, come I back. feel like we could get this one back. So this is what when you did. When you did the top ten, this was two years ago. Devonte Adams quote tweeted it and said, "Everyone <laughs> give who Chris that guy Sims is. the attention he is seeking." Yeah, he only gave you one M. I don't in know your who that is. Name. He's not in my family. The disrespect. Um, so it, when you post your top five, which will be done, Morgan will help us with that. Uh, we could get that. We could get a, another response from Devonte, who seems like a nice guy. Actually, I, he's a great guy. I, this is where I hate doing the list <laughs> right. because, like, I know I'm going to see him one day, and I don't want him to not like me. Yeah. But you know, I, I just again, I'm. I, this is it's my rankings. It's what I prefer. I do have pretty good experience about being around some good receivers and seeing some through my life. All right, whether it's throwing with them or you know just being around them in other ways. And yeah, you know, I guess you know that that's that's my main thing. I'm a little bit more again on just the pure physical ability. And and the, and, and to my point there with a guy like like him at times is you know. You know, hey, this year the playoff game against the 49 he had a good game. You know, if I remember correctly from earlier, it's like, you know, he had eight or nine for around high eighties or nineties, which is a good game. Don't get me wrong. I got that. You know, but I mean it's the 49ers. It's not like there was one special corner on that football team. You know, but I can go to years past or can go to the Buccaneers game and the championship game that year. And I know the stats were nothing special. It was like, you know, seven, eight catches, 60 yards. You know, that's, that, that's my problem with Devontae Adams a little bit compared to the other guys. You know, there's, there's a lot of games like that to me. He was yeah. nine for 90. Nine for 90. 49ers, no yeah. touchdowns. Yeah. He was nine for 67 with a touchdown in 2020 against Tampa. Did have a touchdown against the Rams in, 20, uh, in 2021, I'm sorry. Yeah, nine for 66 so in that game. Yeah. Nine for 66 in that, that game, too. Yep. So, I mean, that that's what I, there's just that explosive element I'm talking sure. about that's just missing there. Again, sure. Devontae Adams fans, Devontae Adams, please send your hate. 2020 he went off in the playoffs. 2020 he went off? Because he was freshly mad off your Off list. my right. I, I, yeah, I gave I him the, the boost yet. he needed. <laughs> it wasn't out yet then. Uh, okay, cool. I like that. I like that. All you've right, come so back with, You've come back with the top five list here. Um, Pete's got a question. Yeah. Russell Wilson went from DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, who both made your honorable mention, yeah. to Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, right. who did not. So why is everyone acting like he upgraded his supporting cast? Well, they year? have, like, phenomenal talent, that crew there. You know, again, I, you know, Sutton's special. Like, Sutton's a physical freak. Still high on Sutton. Yes. You know, I think when you just take I, – I think it's, it's, it's not necessarily an indictment on Lockett and Metcalf as more – it's, in, to me, an indictment on the Seattle offense the last few years. Sure. You know, I think that's what it really is. But then I think what you add to that also is the, like, um, okay, Sutton, Jerry, Judy, there's – there's the Patrick, right, Tim Patrick, and then there's K.J. Hamler to go along with that as well. Yeah. And I know they traded away Noah Fant, but they still have a decent uh, tight end there in, uh, oh, oh, you know, Ogwabagowonum, uh, A.O., Albert O. I'm going to stick with yeah, it right we'll, now. We'll, we'll practice that. Yeah, we're going to practice that you one. You should have been doing that this past five weeks. So, yeah, thank Albert you. O. Thank you. But I think that's, that's probably the reason, right? I think it's the yeah. offense coupled with – you know, it just wasn't working anymore. It just well, was something. Just, not we know that right, offense right. Yeah. there, and it's it was very basic. I, I think that's the biggest problem up there. Judy, uh, Patrick Sutton, and then if you get you know, um, like I said, the kid from KJ Hamler involved, that that could be really special. Red and purple yeah. seventy seven. Do you think next season will be the season a wide receiver breaks the 2,000 yards mark? And who is the favorite to do it? Ooh. All right, two questions in that one. So points bet's got the odds to lead the NFL in receiving yards this season. I would imagine Cooper Cup is up there. Yes, he is up there, plus 800. He is a co-top pick, co-favorite to do it, along with Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. All of them are plus 800. 
Devontae Adams, one below. You say he's going to see a lot of ball. CeeDee Lamb is right there, too. Uh, Stephon Diggs, Kelsey, Hill, Debo, Mike Evans. That's the order of the points bet odds. So two questions there. Number one, let's just start with who do you think is the favorite to lead the NFL in receiving yards? Oh, you know, I, the the thing is, Cooper did it last year by like 300 yards. I know. I have a hard time thinking it'll happen again. I know. Um, you know, especially no OBJ there, no Robert Woods there. I do think that, you know, everybody studies the Super Bowl winner a little bit. I Justin Jefferson is one that intrigues me. He's going to be in a better offense. It's going to be more creative. And there's not necessarily a lot of people. Like, I know Thielen's there, but there's not other weapons that are going to take away from, you know, catches and receptions. And like, Jamar Chase, as awesome as I think he is, you know, they don't always have to force feed him. They can just right. play like, like, oh, we got the matchup, but he's good. Oh, they've played coverage to him. Well, crap, we got to play over here with T. Higgins and Boyd involved, so let's just give them the ball. They're not going to like bang their head on the wall and be like, "I gotta get it to Jamar Chase." So I, you know, I, I do look at that and go, I, I do look at him, uh, Justin Jefferson. Throw that up there one more time. There was one other name that kind of came to my. I wouldn't be shocked if Ceedee Lamb is yeah. either. Yeah, and, and again, it, this is just you know, I, I he's he's clearly going to be the go-to guy. Michael Gallup's coming off an injury. I think they are a pass-first football team. All right, so that C.D. Lamb and Stefan Diggs would be my other two that I'd go with that are off the radar just a little bit or down the list. Diggs for that same reason. You know, one, hey, I think that offense is damn good. Josh Allen's the man. And I do think there is going to be a concerted effort to get him the ball because he's clearly the best receiver. I know Gabe Davis, Gabe Davis should help out and be better and do all that, right. but I think he's clearly the best guy that they will, they will work to. He was eighth in the NFL last year, Stephon Diggs, in receiving yards with 1,225. Um, anyone get 2,000? No, I don't think anyone's getting 2,000. Almost happened last year with I Cooper. Know, but I know. It was, yeah. it was a special, special, special year. year. It special was. Special year. You know, and again, I think that offense. The book is out a little bit now yeah, on how Stafford's right. going to use him. Exactly and what right. he can do with him. Yeah, people are exactly. They're going to know what to expect from the Rams offense via Stafford, the quarterback, as compared to, you know, hey, early on last year, teams are watching clips of Jared Goff and the Rams on offense going, man, all right, this year, last year, they did this and this, and then they get in the game, and they were going, whoa, damn, they don't do that anymore. They have a guy that can throw 105 mile per hour fastballs down. They've changed, and yes, that 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 surprise element will not be there anymore. Let the internet controversy begin. It's Boom. about time we started a new one on uh, Chris Sims's Twitter account. The top five wide receivers are out there. You know who else is out there? Who's out there? Peter King. Bam. He's Peter King there is out there by train, by car, and by plane. Oh, I hear he's taking it all. I don't know about train. Trains, planes, and automobiles. No think, trains. You don't no think? Trains. I don't think so. He's not a train no guy. No train? Morgan's saying no train. He's All not right, a train no guy. Train. He can't pull over and get fast right. food on the train. He ain't going on that. Well, he just ain't happening. You can bring it on there and eat it and do whatever you want. I guess. You got Wi-Fi. I if guess. he takes a train, I'm going to be mad that you guys talked me off of that train thing. Right. Uh, but he's out doing the training camp tour It's always right fun now. when he does this. He's on his annual training camp tour. It has already given us some viral moments. He's Pete, the best. I think we have that. Josh Allen, have a great year. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Appreciate you. Oh. For NBC Sports, Bills Camp, this is Peter King. All the best to you. You still got it? Yeah, we got it. Thank you. I'll so, see you. We did it. So, <laughs> he, still, he still didn't get it. <laughs> so if you're if you're listening and not watching, as uh, as Peter was wrapping up with Josh Allen right there, uh, he was extending his hand to do a handshake. We counted it. It was eight seconds. He left Josh Allen hanging. On eight the seconds, left him hanging. This is from NBC Sports. Looked back and saw his hand out. Yeah. And Josh referenced, hey, it's been out here for a while. And he still didn't. He was like, yeah, we got it. And yeah. Josh is referencing his hand. And he has, Peter has no idea. So but, we're having some fun with him on social media today. But anyone to, to leave you hanging, you want it to be Peter King, a legend of uh, NFL That's when you reporting know, and sports time. writing. He's, He's like, it. this hand writes so many important things. I don't <laughs> shake with little yeah. pissants like Josh I do Allen. it on my time, right? <laughs> yeah. You might want to shake you now. You shake when I'm ready. <laughs> Wait till I say for NBC oh, Sports. Baby. All right, Josh? Man. Man. You can catch all of Peter's training camp videos on our new YouTube page. I don't know if you heard about this. YouTube.com slash NFL on NBC. You can also hear his interviews on the Peter King podcast. You can uh, subscribe wherever you download your 
podcast. Peter King is out there on cars and on planes, and we'll see. We don't think on trains, but maybe one day. Want to talk about the Super Brawl bracket? Because we do Got this to. as a fun thing. We do, you know, it's a fun. It's uh, you do your top forty quarterbacks, and so it was a year ago that I was like, well, why don't we do another thing in conjunction with that list? Right. And it was you pair the coach with the quarterback, and you say who's going to win in a barroom fight. Yeah. You know, and and I determined with my rankings and my seedings that dead last in the NFL was Tua and Mike McDaniel. Yeah. I th- not that they're not tough. I just thought that they would lose brutally in a fight to every other quarterback and coach combination <laughs> in, in the NFL. You know who did not agree with me? Mm-hmm. The uh, the Finns Twitter mob. No doubt. Especially when they see it attached to my name. So we did we did voting. You probably say if you if you're listening to the podcast, you probably follow Chris. You probably saw it all over Twitter. You got to vote on who would win in a fight and Finns Twitter just uh, was showing up in droves from round one all the way through the final round. You see it. They beat Josh Allen and uh, Sean McDermott in the final there, 54 to 45. Good showing by Bill's Mafia, too. Of of all the of all the Twitter crews, they were second to the Finns crew. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, Bill's Mafia is amazing. Oh, man, look at that. Going to kick my boy blue like that? Oh, Jordan on Twitter got a little <laughs> gift. I love it. Of Josh uh, getting knocked, getting kicked in the head that's by That's really Tua. good. Damn, <laughs> Karate Kid's special right there. <laughs> that's, yeah. No doubt. I, you know, Again, like you said, they're tough. I have a hard time thinking they're going to win the Super Brawl. Uh, mm. They are definitely the smallest coach-quarterback combination uh, in the game. So. I don't think that's disputable. Jason's got a shot of Tua here running over number 30. Who's that for the Jets? Yeah, hey, he's Oof. he's an athlete. He's got some stoutness to him. There's no doubt. Uh, there's there's no doubt. But hey, I, I loved it that they kind of hijacked the experience. So there we are. We fixed their photo. You remember Hans and Franz from Saturday Night Live? We're here to bomb. Yeah, you, you up. up. So that's now we got Mike McDaniel into it. Hey, get, you know what? Give him a lot of credit. You know there was some uh, there was some hate. You know, spewed on there too, and I don't like that. But there was passion. Yeah, and they are defending their team. And I will say this. I, from seeing it firsthand, watching your mentions, I don't think it's we call them two and on. I don't think that's totally accurate. No, I hear you. I think I think this is dolphin on. I think no matter who the quarterback was, if they were slighted by you, I think they would show up on your doorstep in droves. It's just me though. It has it's, to be me. It's probably just them. you. <laughs> this is probably just you think. But yeah. I think it's dolphin on. I don't remember them sticking up for Ryan Tannehill so aggressively. Oh, I'll say that. Po- that's a good right? point. I will say that. We need to pose that question, uh-huh. Pete, to yeah. Dolphins Twitter. Where right. was this for Ryan Tannehill? Exactly. Why right. is it just Tua? That's yeah. a good point. I mean, he brought him to the playoffs. Maybe last because time I they want it so bad. They wanted it so bad yeah. to be like, ah, oh, Tannehill was the problem. Tua is going to be the answer. Now they're stuck to that. Well, I, I think there is that. They wanted him so bad there in Miami that you know they got them and they just they want to make it work I will say to to your point and again I know the Miami fans don't like me and all of that but um, I do think it proves that you know, there's more passion in that fan base maybe than the the national media realizes. I, I would agree with you that. Know, that's yeah. right. I think everybody thinks it's yeah, it's Miami, it's South Beach. They're down there sipping pina coladas. The stadium's and the not always full. I right. don't know. Right. Exactly right. But it's still a strong following. Yeah. And it seems like it's you know gotten stronger. They should be pumped. There's no doubt. I mean, there's a lot to be excited about. And I mean, hey, I'm 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 really gonna be interested to see what they do this year. That definitely. One of the most talented teams in football. There's no doubt. They they are stacked across the board. So going to be interesting to see what Mike McDaniel and Tua can do do with all that talent. So Pete notes yeah. the big question now: Will the Dolphins repeat as Super Brawl champions next season when they have a new quarterback? So Pete's really curious to see what happens uh, when uh, Tua is no. Uh, no, we don't know that that's going to happen. No, but there's those rumors still. <laughs> I, I think there's yeah. still people that think, like, if things didn't go well this year in Miami, you know, and they underperform or it got ugly, I think there's still people that think Stephen Ross will write the check to McDaniel and get him out of town and write a new check for Sean Payton and then Tom Brady. 
and then they'll win the Super Brawl for the second year in a row. Because everyone's like, there's <laughs> they're going, no here's way our, they're Finn's losing. Twitter, here's our new guys. Right. Let's go. Right. Let's so, get Chris again. I know that thought is out there. I don't know. Again, we'll see. I got faith in Mike McDaniel. I think he is really creative. He's different, you know, as far as the way he maybe talks to players as to your normal head coach and all that. But that doesn't mean, like, his message is, is going to fall on deaf ears. I mean, yeah. he's he's really smart. I think he'll be able to prove his 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 uh, football wisdom that way. And like I said, their team is really talented. And I'm not I'm not rooting against them, that's for sure. sure. I know everyone thinks I don't want two of them to win. That's not true. Definitely not It'd true. I'm a cool big Mike McDaniel fan. Really were awesome I like awesome lefty offense. quarterbacks, yeah. and they got things to, to like about their team. Well, I, the, my favorite part of this whole thing was yeah. people would tweet you and go, terrible rankings. And it was my rankings Sims the whole time. Sims is an idiot. Yeah. How could you have them here? And it's like, he didn't. I did, um, so I got to get uh, I get to get off uh, scot free yeah, on that, which as I usual. really enjoyed. That. As usual, I yeah, no that. problem, right? I was like, Let's yeah, more was work Chris on thinking? me. Let's me take all the crap <laughs> in social media, yeah. and then you know I see him in a few days, and he does it again. The it's one, great. T- yeah, the one time I do the work, I don't even get the hate for it. So I do like that. <laughs> I do like that. All right, so I think we're gonna save the uh, ask me anything for cool. Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, that was a pretty. We're at an hour and thirty right now. I think. Right. Is that what we did? Oh, hour right, 15. Hour I think okay, that's a that's sweet so spot. Hour right, 15, good. I think, is a sweet spot. Yeah, we don't want to go crazy. Um, all right, so let's do that. On, on Wednesday, we'll hit it up. Okay. We might even do another physician ranking. We're going to make you do it again? There might be. We might wait till next week. We're going to talk about it Could a little bit. Could be some bit. debate on we'll that. Do, we'll, right, have, right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk we about that We do have a lot of questions. I mean, we can get more, I'm sure. Definitely. So. And I think, hey, we still have some, some topics, I think, that... You know, we can hit on that happened even throughout the break. Yeah. And I think we're going to be gifted with some news here as teams continue to Ooh. start training camp and do all that as well oh, here. Do you know of something no, out there? I don't. Okay. I don't. I wish. Okay. Yeah. But I got to think something will happen. Something will yeah. happen. Yeah. All right, everybody. Peace out. My man, Ahmed Farid, pulling an all-nighter once again. <laughs> Baseball to football yeah. in his red pants. Nobody does it better. Yep. All right, homies. Be good. Thanks for getting back on the show here. We'll be back every Monday, Wednesday until the season starts. And then it's going to be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we're cranking. We're rolling. Going to the Hall of Fame next week. We got that to look forward to. Wow, that's next week already. That's next week already. Raiders, Jags in Canton. We'll be there for the pregame on NBC. Going to do my pod from out there too. So everybody be good. Keep sending the questions. Tell me about the the wide receiver rankings. I'd love to have more conversations about this. It's a deep topic. There's lots of nuance to it. And I think there's a lot of things we could probably still explain or talk about there. So hit me up. Ahmed, you the man. Peace out, everybody. Talk to you soon. Clap Clap it it up. up. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.